This is episode 213, 213. And on today's show, we're going to talk about five tips for your next Caribbean cruising, celebrating career change. A lot of C's, right? One, two, three, four, five C's. So it's the tips that I came away with from my recent cruise, as you may have heard me mention in episode 211 about me cruising the Caribbean. And so today I want to talk about five tips for your next Caribbean cruising or your next Caribbean cruise celebrating career change. That's what it is. Five tips for your next Caribbean cruise celebrating career change. Well, why would you go on a cruise to celebrate your career change? Well, it, for many reasons, as you would do for any other celebration. But whether it's a career change you're celebrating or it is a birthday or anniversary or just vacation, these tips would be helpful or I believe will be helpful to you. By the way, you're listening to The Midlife Launch and I'm your host, your coach, and your Sherpa. So Kingsley, what is a Sherpa? Oh, by the way, my name is Kingsley Grant, just in case I did not mention that. So Kingsley, what is a Sherpa? A Sherpa is just somebody who is like a guide. They, they know about the terrain that you're traveling on, the path you are about to embark upon, and they know that very, very well to some degree. They know where the pitfalls are. They know where the landmines are. Are, they know that where the things that may cause you some pain are, and they're going to help guide you around those so you don't experience or have to pay the price that they have paid. So they have really become a scapegoat. Pay the price, and now it's going to help you in that regard. That's who I am as your Sherpa. My friend, I recently, as I mentioned in episode 211, if you have not listened to that episode, let me encourage you to go back and listen to that show because you will hear me as I prepare for for that. But what I want to talk about now, having returned from a seven-day, six-night cruise to the Western Caribbean, I want to share with you some tips that I came away with. Now, let me mention the stops that I had first before the, I mentioned the first. Well, let me give you the first the tips, and I'll talk more about them. The, first, the five tips are these. Number one, bring some clothes to exercise. So plan to exercise. You say, Kingsley, I've doesn't, that's not something that I want to go on a vacation to do. Well, in a few moments, you'll hear why I think, and I want to impress upon you to do that. Secondly, I want to have you, encourage you to tour the island that you stop, where you make your stop, if possible, tour the island. Well, again, you're saying, how do I do that? Because there are many, the price is kind of steep in some regards. Yes, but I'll tell you about what we did and how we held the cost down. Number three, create me time. Yeah, me time, meaning for you to kind of get away from everybody else. And I'll tell you again why I, I say that. Number four, bring a bottle of wine. If you are a person that drinks alcohol, okay? And again, <laughs> I'm only telling these five, and I'll tell you all the reasons why I mentioned them in a few moments. And number five is learn to barter. Learn to barter, you know, and I tell you more because as a person from Jamaica, from the Caribbean, this is something that we are all used to. And you will hear more about that in a few moments. So these are the five tips that I'm going to expand on in a few moments. But I wanted to kind of give you an, an idea of how this trip was for me. As you know that uh, for me, I, I went to our first stop was Honduras and we went to an island in the Honduras, uh, in the country of Honduras, called Roatan, and and Roatan is separated from the main city by water, but that's where our stop was. And there, while while there, we decided it was nine of us in a, as family members, nine of us that have gone, and we decided to go to uh, rent a a minivan, and to actually is to char not it's not to rent but to hire one that came with a tour guide and we were going to 
travel into about two and a half hours inland and look at different parts of the country and get some historical information about the country and also partake of some of the local food that we could have there at a local restaurant. We had the, the van for those few hours that we had, we had hired it for. So we, we could make our own stops and we didn't have to worry about time. Well, yeah, we had to get back to the ship at a certain time, yes. But we could take our own time and ask for stops as we so chose. All right, we chose to. Now, here's what happened. That we, having gone there, we heard that one of the specialties as far as the restaurants was concerned was that this one restaurant that our tour guide mentioned and we asked to go to cooked and he, get this now it's maybe a bit squeamish but if you're like ah yeah, ooh, you, you, you want to kind of prepare for this but yes iguana <laughs> iguana yes that is what we heard and how delicious it was. We was asking our, asking our tour guide, how does that taste? And she said, oh, it, it tastes very good. And, and she went through how it's prepared and, and all of that. And I said, I want some. I want some of that. I want to taste the iguana. I can't come as far as I did and not do that. Having tasted some things like before, like alligator, you know, I think this is something I could try. So anyway, we went to this restaurant and having gotten there, we saw all these people who were on our cruise or another cruise ship that was close by had also made their way to this restaurant. I said, man, it seemed to be this spot, the happening spot in the in the town, in the in the in the village. And, and so we got there and I asked to I ordered some iguana and rice and peas. And a few minutes later, the lady came back and she said, I'm so sorry, sir. We ran out of iguana. I said, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Running out of iguana? I mean, this is the thing that we all came here for. And a family that was sitting behind me said the very same thing. Like They were disappointed because they came all the way here to taste and have some iguana. But what happened was our tour guide who knew the people there decided to ask for a sample. Was there something left over, some sampling of the, you know, some gravy, something that I could have of the iguana? And she brought me a little cup with uh, some iguana, just, you know, pieces of meat here and there and some bones and and just to taste it. And boy, did it taste good. Yes, it did. It tasted so good. I could have a meal. I wanted to have a full meal. And I gave my sister and some of my family members, just, just a few of them because everybody else was squirmish and didn't want to taste it. But I said, hey, it's good. Taste it. And, and they did. My wife also, I'm, I'm surprised that she did taste it as well. And it was delicious. Delicious. Okay. That's what it was. And maybe where you are listening to this episode, probably you have tasted iguana. Maybe you prepared it yourself. Maybe it's a part of your culture. I don't know. We have so many people listening to this episode, this podcast around the world Possibly you might be one who said, Kingsley, come on. That is our a regular dish for us. Well, you know, I, I'm, too, I'm sorry. I, I, I've never had it before. And I'm, the very thought of it, kind of like, ooh. But then after tasting it, I could have some more. Especially where I had gone to, you know, in, in, in um, Rotan in Honduras. So wh- my point is that you... Um, so that's our first stop in Honduras. And, and that would fit into my tip number two, the to tour your island stops. Because that is, I would never have experienced that had I not done that. Had I not, you know, we had, had we not hired this um, tour guys, this tour bus, it's a mini minivan. And he said, Kingsley, isn't that expensive? Well, here's what we did. On the ship, you could actually per, uh, purchase ahead of time tours like this. And you pay... A lot more money because the ship is gonna. They, they, you know, the, the ship owners are in business for to make money, so they're gonna put their price of orchestrating and planning this, this whole thing out inside the package. So you're paying not only for the driver and the tour guy, but also for the, the ship as a business, a company looking to make money. And what we did was we did not purchase ours through the ship, you know. Some people do, and I and I get it because 
Some people might feel safer, and they do talk about that. Some places you don't want to go out on the streets and hire someone. You could get some, you know, some, you know serious problems in some places. But it was nine of us, so it's you know, it not just one. And I thought it would be, you know, not a bad deal. So we found someone outside who gave us a much better deal for the tour than if we had done it and purchased it as a package on the ship. Now, again, I'm not suggesting you don't do that. I'm not somehow saying never do that. No. Again, safety first. And you have to have, you have to decide what is comfortable for you and what you're able to take a chance with. We did, and it worked out just perfect. So that is number tip number two is tour the island because you get a chance to hear the stories. And our next stop was um, in, in, in Belize. And in Belize, we did the very same thing. We got out of the ship, went out, out on the streets. We found someone. We negotiated a price. And let me go now to tip number five I mentioned earlier about bartering. Bartering is simply saying that, you know what, the price that's presented to you on the Caribbean in the island, ask for a better price. Don't just settle for the price given to you. Because number one, you're going to get a tourist price. They're seeing dollar signs when you walk off their ship. They ain't no fool. They are. They, they know that this is an opportunity to get the best price possible. So they're going to give you a high price and they'll tell you, you know, for example, this person said, oh, you know, we, we, we normally charge $35 per person for the store. And, but we're going to charge you $25. I said, $25? That's a lot of money for one per person for a tour of the island of Belize. And he said, oh, yeah, it's a good deal, da, da, da. You know, the ship is, and, and, and granted, on the ship is about $25, $28, or $30 thereabouts per person. So I said, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do that. And I was willing to walk away. I said, I have some kids who are not working, and, and therefore you have to give us a better price. Is that the best you can do? And they said, well, I'm not, you know, and back and forth. I said, okay, I'm sorry. I, you know, we just walk away. Because you know what? I'm not going to let my emotion drive me. Now, some people will say, you know, okay, I will go ahead with that because it sounds better than 35. I said, no, we, we're not going to do that. Eventually, they came down to $20, and I thought that was a very reasonable price. And we said, okay, let's do that for a two-and-a-half-hour tour. I mean, I'm sorry, two-hour tour. Let's go ahead and do that. And, and we did. And this time, we did not stop to, to sample any dishes in Belize because I don't know. If, there's not anything I heard that really struck me there. And so we just kind of did a tour and, you know, we went to the chocolate factory. Actually, we went to the chocolate factory in Honduras as well. When I say chocolate factory, don't, don't, you might be seeing this big building and all these machineries. No, 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 no. It's a small place. And you see almost a, a man, you know, man operated, manually operated machine. And people are, are pushing this and pushing that. And, but you, you see how from the coffee bean though, all the way to a chocolate, that how it's pre- prepared. And we went to one factory in, in, um, in Honduras, in Roatan, and also in Belize, we did the very same thing. And we had a chance to see that. So really, you know, we also had a, ch- had a chance to, to go to uh, the ruins, and that is in Cozumel, so I'm trying to get everything mixed up here, because, you know, sometimes you wonder, where, where am I here? But in Belize, we did that, and it was really good. In Cozumel, we did the very same thing. Now, I didn't want to necessarily go and sample food in Cozumel, because sometimes, you know, again, they tell you many times about the water in Mexico, that don't drink the water, and I get it. So we're going to try to avoid eating out on the streets when it came to food in Cozumel, because of that various health reasons. So we get a tour of that, and we had a chance to experience parts of the island, and we went to the ruins, uh, one of the ruins there. And, you know, really, it was good to have. But my point is that had we stayed on the ship, had we just stayed in the vicinity of the tourist area that you get all the ship to go to, we would never have experienced those island um, historical things that we came away with. So I want to recommend, I give you two tips here. One is to to get off the ship, I mean, to I'm sorry, tour the, the island and Get a chance to know a bit more about the island if you possibly can afford to, or you can do that. And, and another tip was barter the price. Don't just accept the price they give you because you could probably get a negotiate a better price because that's they, they understand that. They know the game, and you have to play the game just as well as they're playing that. Okay. Now that's two tips I gave you in that one 
explanation about our stops. So one of the tips was, again, tour the island of your stops and barter the price or negotiate for a better price than they give you. Now, the first tip I had mentioned when I went on the list, so I'm kind of going around, kind of jumping around here because it just kind of fits what I'm describing, is exercise. Bring some clothes to exercise. Again, I mentioned before, you might be pushing back and say, I'm not a person who exercise. Well, here's what happened. There is, there, are so, there is so much food on the ship. You're eating all the time. Food is always available. And you feel like a stuffed pig if you don't have a way to exercise. On deck seven of the ship is, a, is an outside deck where you can walk around the whole ship. Even if you go for a walk every day and walk a few of the times around the ship, is better than nothing. So if you can jog and walk, it's better. And then also there is a gymnasium, a small gymnasium, but a good size enough for you to go and find a place to exercise. And not everybody's going there. So even though the ship may have, you know, 3,000 people, trust me, you may find a very, very small percentage of people who are there at any given time. So I would recommend that you go and exercise because you want to not come back heavier than you went on the ship. And so if you just go for walks every day or walks and run or the gym, you'll find it'll help you at least maintain your weight so when you get off, you don't feel like this stuffed person having who looked like the ship <laughs> yourself getting off that cruise. So I want to encourage you strongly to do that. Now, tip number three I mentioned earlier was the me time. Create some me time. There are so many activities that are given. They have an activity director and his or her job is to make certain that you're entertained at all times, almost 24-7. So they're providing opportunities for you to be always having something to do. But my friend, listen, you'll be one tired wreck of a person when you get back home if you didn't take time to pull away just to rest. Just to kind of find a hiding place and chill, relax, do some introspection, meditate, pray, read, get in touch with yourself. What is your about your career change that you're anticipating? Are there any fears there? Or are, where are you in line with all of that? So it's a good time to journal and pray about the career change that you're going through or you're preparing for. So a me time is very important. I, I found for myself, I was going, going, going. I was, I guess, getting exhausted because, you know, at times you may not sleep as well. You might be up late and get up early in the morning and all of that. So for me, I had to say, you know what? I need a few hours, one of the days, just to get away and be by myself. It is very important for you to do that. Or else you will be so exhausted when you get back home, you feel like you need another vacation. Have you ever felt that way? Gone on a vacation and felt like when you come back, I need a vacation from to get over my vacation? <laughs> yeah, it happens pretty often. So you need some me time just to read and to reflect, as I mentioned, meditate, pray, whatever else you need to do. And the last tip I want to mention is this. Now, if you don't drink alcohol, this one will not apply to you. But I find that the alcohol on the ship is very expensive. I mean, really, you pay $8 for something you would normally pay on the side, probably for two or three. I'm not an alcoholic or a person who drinks a lot of alcohol, so I don't really know the prices in many places. But I do know when I do have wine, a glass of wine or here or there, sometimes you pay 3 Five dollars outside the ship. On the ship, you're paying maybe six or eight dollars for that small glass of wine. But they allow you to bring a bottle of wine, one per person, on the ship. So I would recommend that you bring just a bottle of wine that you could have and just pour yourself at times you want to in your glass and just walk around with it and just sip on that if you so choose to. That will save you a lot of money because you cannot get on the ship and buy alcohol out in the stops and take it back on the ship and consume it. No, they will keep it for you until you're ready to get off on the last day of your cruise. So they're very smart. They want to sell the alcohol on the ship. That's where they make a lot of money, tons of money. So you want to bring that 
at least it will keep you, again, if you're a heavy drinker now, that's a different story. You may want to then, of course, save up just to, you know, feed your alcohol consumption kind of desire, right? Your, your taste buds and so on. So it all depends on you as a person. But my friend, I find that these five tips, oh, by the way, here's a bonus tip. Now, here is where I mean, five feet, nine inches height is where I, at times, I said something that, oh, I wish I was six feet tall or six feet, one inches. Or six, but I then realized, wait a minute, on the ship, I'm so glad I'm not. Why? Because the shower, have you ever been on a cruise? But unless you have a stateroom, I've never had a stateroom, so I don't know if the shower is much bigger. I would assume it's bigger there. But I'm telling you one thing. The shower is not a place you can turn around in. You go in and you remain that one face at one direction for the most part while you're taking a shower. I have a friend who had told me about when he went on a cruise sometime back and he would jokingly say, you know, he's a very big guy. I mean, he is almost as tall, I mean, as wide as he is tall, right? And this is a guy who does not, you know, he will make fun of himself. So what I'm saying here, Al can say before him, and he doesn't really, he, you know, he's okay with that. I'm, I'm sure he probably does, which I do know he at times concern, is concerned about that because he constantly trying to lose weight and never succeeded at that. But he would say, man, I went in the shower. And I had to have one foot in the shower and one foot outside the shower, the curtain. I could not pull the curtain to take a shower because it's not enough room for me to shower all that I've got, he said. <laughs> He's speaking about his body mass, right? So it's a very small shower. So if you are a person that is tall, don't expect, don't be surprised if you see this very small thing that they call a shower, and wonder, you may have to, if you're very tall, you may have to bend down and, and, you know, stoop down and take a shower. I don't know how tall people do that. Thank God I didn't have to worry about that. It's about six feet in height, I would say, that the shower might be thereabouts, right? So I just wanted to bring, bring that to your attention. So these five things, five things, my friend, I mentioned, number one, and again, it's about if you're going through a change or a vacation or you're planning a career change, it's a great place to go away to think about it, think through what's happening, maybe to kind of get a, a break between your past career and the new career. And you hear me talk more about career changes in a very near future as I'm pivoting from the Vimy Life Launch. If you listen to my episodes 207, 208, thereabouts, I talk about where I'm going in this this podcast. You'll be hearing me say at some point, we are now launching, have launched a new show called Smooth Career Change with your host, Kingsley Grant. That's what you'll be hearing very, very soon, my friend. And I'm preparing you preparing you for that. So I'm doing a, a change of some sort myself. I am working through, as I speak to you, a career change in mind. My major work right now have been therapy and counseling and all of that. But I'm really shifting away into full-time. I want to be, do just simply coaching and speaking and writing. That it would be the change I'm moving to full-time. I want that to be my full-time thing in 2017. And I would love to hear your plans for 2017. What are some things you're thinking about? I would love to hear what it is you have. And, and so you can leave some comments in the show notes at themidlifelaunch.com slash 212. Or you can email me. I would love to hear you hear from you. And I answer all my email personally. So you can email me at podcast at themidlifelaunch.com. So podcast at themidlifelaunch.com. And it'll come straight to me. I'd love to hear what are your career change plans, if there are any. What are some things you've learned and if you love to be on my show to be interviewed, having gone through a career change of some sort, I would love to interview you, you, or if you know somebody who would benefit from that or could be a great guest on my show, please let me know about that. My friend, before I guess kind of summarize these five tips for you, I, I do hope and pray that you have really take some time to think about your life as a year. 2016 is coming to an end. Are you happy with where you are right now? I'll be talking more about this in the next episode. And, and looking at where are you right now? How happy are you with that? Do you look forward to making some changes in 2017? If so, what are they? 
Do you want to see the gap between where you are and where you want to be closed? That's what they think I coach people around. And I would love to work with you. If you're interested, you can see the packages on my site at kingsofgrant.com and click on this the coaching menu and you can take it right there to see the packages I have. See which of those three packages I have there that may work for you. I would love to really work with you on that. Help you close the gap between where you are and where you want to be, especially around a career change. That is my focus will be more so in 2017 than at any other time. So I would love to hear from you about that. So go to Kingsley, K-I-N-G-S-L-E-Y, G-R-A-N-T dot com and click on the coaching menu, look at the packages and let us talk more about that. You can email me from that page as well. So my friend, it's great talking to you. It's great to have you again here today. And please don't forget to leave me a rating and a review on the show at on iTunes. You can find the links in the show notes at themidlifelaunch.com slash 213. And then you can leave me the um, you can leave me a rating and a review there as well. So here are the five tips I mentioned. Five tips for your next Caribbean cruise celebrating career change is this. Number one, plan to exercise. Bring your exercise clothes. Number two, tour the island, the stops you make at different islands. Do a tour of those stops. Number three, create me time. Number four, bring a bottle of wine if you're a person who drinks alcohol. And number five, learn to barter or negotiate the prices that you're offered from these people who are the natives because they'll take you out to dry. So don't let that happen to you. I would love to hear from you, as I mentioned before. So please check in with me through podcast at themidlifelaunch.com and let me know what's happening with you. Okay, with that said, my friends, thank you. God bless. Peace out. And I'll see you on the flip side. Yeah.